Welcome everyone to Therapeutic Yoga class today. We're tackling stress management. So we're going to do a little bit of a different class today because we're going to kind of dive in a little bit more to not the physical practice of yoga, but more the mindfulness practice of yoga. So today's class is titled Therapeutic Yoga for Stress Management. But what I really want you to be thinking about here is we have one goal for our stress management class today, and that is the term equanimity. So if you've never heard the term equanimity before, essentially what it means, uh, it's got lots of different definitions, but essentially what it means is the ability to stay cool and calm when there are tumultuous events happening around us. Now, obviously, tumultuous events are very different for every single person because it's all a matter of perception. But with that being said, we all want to try to work, be, be uh, going towards trying to be a little bit more responsive to things happening in our world rather than reacting to things in our world. So that is our goal for today's class. Now, I am going to pull out some things today in our class that I don't normally do. So we are going to do some physical movement, but it's going to be very gentle movements today. So literally anybody could do this therapeutic yoga class. You are going to need your yoga mat and a pillow when we get down to the floor to do some um, movements and positions. But what I would like you to do is begin sitting in a chair. Any chair will be fine, whether it's got wheels or not, but try to have it so that you can have your feet flat on the floor. So if the chair is too deep, go ahead and put a pillow or something behind you so that you have a gentle support for your spine, but you feel that your feet are on the floor. And then also in sitting, before we get started with talking about our class today, you'll need some sort of strap or belt or something that you'll be able to kind of tackle these muscles of your thoracic girdle. So stress management. What we're going to do to begin with is I'm going to give you the shortest description I think I'm possibly capable of to describe the anatomy of the nervous system. So I'm not trying to overwhelm anybody. I want to make it as simple as possible. But if you want to manage stress and you want to achieve better equanimity, you have to have some education on how your nervous system works. So here it goes. Your nervous system is essentially broken up into two pieces. You have your central nervous system, which is your brain and your spinal cord. The brain stem, which is the back of your skull inside, is also considered part of that uh, central nervous system. The second half of your nervous system is called your peripheral nervous system, meaning it is outside of the spinal cord and the skull. So the peripheral nervous system once again, is broken into two pieces. Now, when we think about what those two pieces are, one of those pieces we have volitional control of. So those are the nerves that make us move our arms, move our legs, walk, do everything that we do in life. The second half of the peripheral nervous system is what is called the autonomic nervous system, meaning we do not have volitional control of it. But we have tools to control it. So when we, I cannot say heart, increase your rate, blood pressure, decrease, digestion, stop working. I don't have volitional control of it, but I have tools that I can work on improving that autonomic nervous system. So two parts of your, of your central, of your nervous system, central and peripheral, two parts of your peripheral, volitional and autonomic. And then if we take that autonomic nervous system, there are two parts. So it's like a two, two, two. So it's easy to remember. So the autonomic nervous system, you have the sympathetic fight or flight or freeze response and the parasympathetic rest response, renew response, relaxation response. So that's what we're gonna be working on today. So a little bit of anatomy about the nervous system relative to the peripheral nervous system. We have 12 nerves that come out of our cranium or our skull. They're called cranial nerves. So pretty smart how they named them. The remainder of our peripheral nerves come out of our spinal column. 
So the nerves that we're gonna be focusing on today are those cranial nerves. So there are 12 of them, but there are in fact four of them that target that per, um, parasympathetic nervous system, meaning they are primarily relax, renew, and rest nerves. So of course, in a therapeutic yoga class on stress management, those are the nerves that we are gonna be tackling today. So what I want you to be thinking about about today's class is, no matter how anxious, depressed, stressed you are, you'll be able to take home with you one or two or three of the things that we do today and integrate them into your daily life to start to reduce your stress. So let's begin with what the first thing we're gonna do is. The first thing we're gonna do is tackle the first cranial nerve that is part of that parasympathetic nervous system. And that is cranial nerve number three. Now, cranial nerve number three, its big name is ocular motor nerve, but here's the bottom line. It is the nerve that controls the movements of our eyes. So a lot of us that have neck pain, that have headaches, that have stress, that get really tight up here, we can actually exercise our eyes and reduce the stress and the tension and tone and all of those muscles. So that's what we're going to begin with today. So what I'd like you to do is find yourself in a comfortable seated position, feet flat on the floor, spine nice and, and tall and strong if you can. Try to relax through your front of your body and your and your heart, easier said than done if you're stressed, right? Just gently place your hands on your thighs. And then once your hands are on your thighs, just keep your neck nice and long. So elongate that neck and kind of let that chin settle into your throat. And then keep your eyes gazed open. And with your guys gaze, eyes gazed open, hard to say by the way, without moving your head, just gently take your eyes and turn your eyes to the right. Now check in that your head didn't turn as your eyes turned to the right, but maybe gaze at something on your right side here. Now relaxation response, let's talk about breathing. Keep gazing, don't move, you can hear me. Can you take a nice deep, slow inhale into your belly? And then even slower exhale that air out. Let's do that one more time. Inhaling in. and exhaling out. And then gently bring your gaze back to the center. Head stay still for now. Now allow yourself to take your gaze to the left, but don't let your head move. So make sure the neck is long, the chin is tucked, head is still, body is comfortably tall and strong. Gaze to the left. Now, as you gaze to the left, maybe find that one steady object to gaze at. Don't let your head move. Deep inhale into your belly. And slower exhale. Make that exhale nice and slow as it gently comes out through your nose. Deep inhale. And slow exhale. And then gently bring your gaze back to the center. All right. Now we're going to be gazing upward. So this is a little bit of a difficult one because a lot of us, as soon as we bring our gaze up, we let our chin lift. So really allow yourself to lengthen your neck, settle your chin, feel yourself nice and tall, strong spine here with feet on the floor. And then go ahead and keep your, gaze, your head where it is and gaze straight up. Now find something to look up at, gaze at it, make sure that neck stays long, that chin stays tucked. Do you feel your glute muscles contracting as you do that? You might. It's common that that happens. Okay, deep inhale into your belly. And then exhaling out. One more time, deep inhale into the belly. And then exhaling out. And then bring your gaze back to the center. One more direction, gazing downward. So lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Take your tongue, place it on the roof and the mouth. Haven't mentioned that yet, but that's a resting position for these TMJs or your temporal, temporal mandibular joints. And then allow yourself to stay nice and tall, but just take your gaze downward. Find something steady to look at and deep inhale into your belly. 
and then slowly exhaling out. One more time, deep inhale into the belly. And then slowly exhaling out. And then gaze back to the center. All right. Now we're doing it all over again, but with our eyes closed. So here's the thing. You know what you looked at in all four directions. Now what I want you to do is use your brain. Okay, literally use your brain and picture those things that you gazed at, even though that your eyes are closed. So why close our eyes? We start to fire the mechanical receptors in our neck that are going to make our neck stay straight as we use those ocular motor muscles, firing up that cranial nerve number three, calming our nervous system down because of the fact that that nerve is part of our parasympathetic system. I know it's crazy, you guys, but it works. All right. Nice tall spine, feet resting on the floor, lengthen the neck, settle the chin, rest the tongue onto the roof of the mouth, gently close your eyes. Now with your eyes closed, allow yourself to turn your eyes and gaze to the right. Can you picture in your head what you looked at? Holding there, take a deep inhale. Don't let your head turn, just your eyes, exhaling slowly. One more nice deep inhale. Exhaling slowly, 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 guys. Don't open your eyes, but bring your gaze straight back in front of you. Gaze to the left. All right, head stays tall. Chin is gently tucked in, tongue is to the roof. Gazing to the left, do you remember what you looked at? Nice deep inhale into the belly. And then exhaling slowly out. Deep inhale into the belly. Slowly exhaling out. Head stays long, chin gently tucked. Gaze goes back to the center. Imagine you're looking at that screen for a minute, but you're not because your eyelids are closed. Now take your gaze up. What did you look at? This is really hard to do, but I want you to do it. I can even feel my forehead muscles firing when I do it. As you look up with your eyelids closed, you are really challenging that nervous system. Keep gazing up. Take that deep inhale in. Slowly exhaling out. Deep inhale in, guys. Slowly exhaling out. Bring your gaze back to the center. Picture that you're looking in your device right now. And then finally, neck long, chin tucked if you lost it. Tongue, put it back on the roof of the mouth. Feet, place them back on the floor. Spine nice and tall. Last position. Keep the eyelids closed. Keep the head nice and tall. Gaze downward. What did you look at? Think about what you looked at. Deep inhale in. And exhaling out. And one more time. Deep inhale in. and exhaling out. Beautiful. Then bring your gaze back to the center and then open your eyes. Yeah, so cranial nerve number three, ocular motor nerve. We've already begun working that nerve by using our eyes to start to relax our nervous system and relax the neck muscles that have a direct connection to that. Now, the suboccipital muscles, which are in the back of the upper part of your neck, those are the muscles that directly link to that ocular motor nerve, just because of where it comes out of your, of your cranium or your skull. All right, so let's move on to the next stress reduction or management technique. So now we're moving on to the second nerve that's part of that parasympathetic nervous system, and it's called your facial nerve. So here's what I want you to think about with your facial nerve. Smile. When you smile, right, you use all those muscles of your body, you light up that facial nerve. As you do that, you start to reduce the tension in your nervous system that's related to that stress response because you're firing up that relaxation response. But what we're gonna begin with is actually something that originates in Chinese medicine. We're gonna use an acupuncture point and do something called acupressure. So we're gonna be using a particular point called large intestine 20. Now don't worry about what it's called, but that's its actual name as far as an acupuncture point is concerned. It runs a meridian in the front of our body, 
okay? Where it is located, if you can find the flare of your nostril, it is located one eighth of an inch out from that flare of your nostril. In fact, this point is so important in relaxing the nervous system that it has different names in different cultures. So in Chinese medicine, they actually call this particular, this particular actu acupuncture point welcoming fragrance. Now, the reason it's called welcoming fragrance is it really opens up your sinuses and your ability to smell. Your ability to smell is cranial nerve number one. Because it opens up your ability to smell, you guys, it allows you to breathe better, therefore welcoming fragrance. In other cultures, it is called the golden bamboo. So it is the top of the top of the acupuncture points because of how positively it impacts your stress response. So let's do this. Find your right index finger. Find the nostril of your right nose. Figure out what feels like about an eighth of an inch outside of that nostril. And once you find that point, what I want you to do is just gently move your skin around. So don't, don't press really deep yet. Just gently move your skin around. And you're going to feel where there's actually a little bit of bone underneath you. Now, there are actually two bones that intersect where your finger is. And you have many different facial muscles that are right there. But here's what I want you to do. Press inward enough that you feel like you're like indenting a piece of foam. And once you press in enough, just gently move your finger around and feel, is there different areas that you feel more resistance? So for example, on myself, I feel more resistance when I push up right now. So here's all we're gonna do. Hold that finger pressing inward. Feel any direction that you feel resistance. Gently hold that resistance. Focus with your mouth on the tongue on the roof of your mouth. Maybe put a little bit of smile on your face. And now we're gonna really focus on some deep, slow, diaphragmatic or belly breaths. So deep inhale in and really slowly exhale out through that nose. Nice deep inhale in, and slowly exhaling out. Two more breaths, deep inhaling in, slowly exhaling out, and one more time, deep inhaling in, and exhaling out. You've got it. Gently release the right finger from that eighth of an inch from your nostril, and let's do it on the opposite side. So find the flare of your left nostril, left in index finger, go about of an eighth of an inch straight out from it, and then don't press yet. Just gently kind of move it around so that you can feel, you can feel that you're moving skin. Now that you can feel that you're moving skin in that area, just press in enough like you're trying to indent into some memory foam. So it's just light pressure inward. But as you push inward, can you feel where there's muscles and you can feel where there's a bone? It may feel completely different than your right side. But once you have it, gently push in enough that you feel, yeah, I, I feel something underneath my finger. Then move your finger around kind of like you're like going around the 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 circle of a clock so you can do clockwise or counterclockwise and feel where there's resistance my resistance on my left side is completely different than my right side so my resistance is more outward on this side on my nostril and then when you find that resistance on you hold into that resistance as you're doing that you're welcoming that fragrance you're opening up your sinuses you're allowing yourself to breathe deeper and more calmer so sustain that pressure on that resistance. Make sure that tongue is on the roof of the mouth. Put a little bit of a smile on your face. This is the facial nerve we're working on after all. And then take a nice, slow, deep inhale into your belly. And then exhaling out. One more time, nice, deep inhale into your belly. 
Exhaling out. No, not one more time. We're doing two more. We did four on the other side. We might as well do it here. Keep your resistance. Inhaling in. Exhaling out slowly. One more time. Inhale in. And exhaling out. You've got it. Beautiful. Relax your finger down. Find your nice tall posture. Now, take a nice, slow, deep inhale into your nose. And then gently exhale that air out really slowly. You've got it. So that cranial nerve number one, even though it's not part of the parasympathetic nervous system, it has fibers to it. Cranial nerve seven, which is your facial muscles, by releasing those muscles, you open up the ability to breathe better. That's what we wanted to focus on there. All right, so two stress projects down, right? Let's go on to our third. Now, I wanna take a very quick second to mention something. I am not magically coming up with all of this stuff that I'm teaching you to manage your stress and to really work on your relaxation response. A lot of the information that I am giving you has been delivered to me by the mentors that I've trained under and from one fabulous book that I want to mention. And that book is Accessing the Healing Powers of the Vagus Nerve. Now we're getting to the vagus nerve next. That's why I'm mentioning it right now. So the reason I mention this book is Stanley Rosenberg and more, not more importantly, but also Dr. Porges, uh, first name is Stephen. Dr. Stephen Porges are brilliant researchers on the nervous system. They have learned how we can have self exercises to manage our stress response to anxiety, depression, to things that are happening around us that we know we have no control of. Once again, our goal for stress management, equanimity, right? Okay, so moving on to the third thing we're gonna do. And this third thing that we're gonna do is what is called a half salamander exercise, which is in fact in this book. So again, I'm not making this up. I just want to teach it to you. So a half salamander exercise, why the heck would you name an exercise for relaxation of your body and your nervous system by a salamander? Well, here's something you may not have known, but the salamander doesn't have a neck. So the very upper joint of our neck is uh, the very upper joint of our neck or our, or our upper body is the only part that a salamander has. So what we're going to do is do exercises to move our neck with our eyes, which will then tackle that cranial nerve three and that vagus nerve, which is cranial nerve number 10. So I want you to sit nice and tall, lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Once you've gotten yourself in that position, can you place that tongue on the roof of your mouth? All right, now don't move your head. Keep your eyes open and turn your gaze to the right. Now that you have your gaze to the right, maybe you're looking at that same object that you looked at before. Now that you have your gaze turned to the right, allow yourself to gently tilt your head so that your right ear is going towards your right shoulder. Now, don't put so much stress into the left side of your neck and shoulder that you feel your shoulder lifting. So it's just a gentle side bend to the right. Once you have that, further gaze downward. So now I'm looking at an object that's on the floor. Hold into that position. This is the half salamander exercise in sitting. Take a deep inhale into your nose. Slowly exhaling out. Keep those eyes to the right. One more time, deep inhale in, slowly exhaling out. Now, gently keep the gaze down to the right, but bring your head back up first. Hard to do. Then slowly bring your gaze back to the center. Really hard to do if you're talking and doing it at the same time, by the way. <laughs> All right, let's do the opposite side. So again, body's nice and tall, neck is nice and long, chin is tucked in, tongues to the roof of the mouth, feet are flat on the floor. So first take your gaze and turn it to the left. Once you have your gaze to the left, keep your gaze to the left, 
left ear to the shoulder. Gently side bend your head to the left. As you do that, your gaze should go downward to the left. Maybe you can even see your nose. I don't know. But make sure that your head does not rotate. Make sure your right shoulder does not elevate. So kind of correct those mechanical things that may go wrong so that you're just doing a gentle side, ten, side tilt and the head is to the left. Eyes to the left and down. Hold the position. Deep inhale into the belly. Slow exhaling out. Deep inhale in. Slow exhaling out. Then keep your gaze to the left, but bring that head back upright first. Hard to do, right? And then bring your head and your gaze back to the center. So half salamander exercise, using that cranial nerve number three, ocular motor nerve, using that vagus nerve, because the vagus nerve kind of comes to the back of our ear here, comes out of the neck and kind of runs sideways. So as you're side bending, you're creating some gentle length of it. As well, this muscle right here, which is called your sternocleidomastoid, see it? See it? You're allowing to create some length into that muscle. Well, that muscle is supplied by the nerve that also comes out of the cranium called the accessory nerve or the 11th cranial nerve. So lots of good things you're doing by doing the half salamander exercise to relax and find that parasympathetic response. All right, so speaking of that accessory nerve, so the accessory nerve is actually more of a sympathetic muscle, meaning it's a stress muscle. So if you've ever wondered if you're highly stressed in your body or in your mind or you're anxious while you're in this position, while you're in that position, it's because the trapezius muscle and the sternocleidomastoid muscle are supplied by that cranial nerve. In fact, they're the only muscles external to our face and skull area that are supplied by a cranial nerve. So now let's work on lengthening some of those muscles and see if instead of facilitating a parasympathetic response, we're gonna try to do something to inhibit a sympathetic or a stress response or a flight or fight response. So here's what I want you to do. Grab your yoga strap. And when you have your yoga strap, have yourself sitting nice and tall, push yourself out to the edge of your seat and place your feet flat on the floor. Get your spine nice and long, lengthen your neck, settle your chin. Now that you've got that position, take your strap, bring your strap up and over your right shoulder. So what I want you to do is imagine that you're putting that strap where you would place a necklace if you had a necklace on your neck. So the trapezius muscle, the upper component of it, tends to be the part that gets the most tense, that gets the most sympathetic from that accessory nerve. So that's the muscle that we're gonna primarily target with this strap, but we're also gonna focus a little bit on the sternocleidomastoid muscle as well. Take your right hand and hold the strap with the right hand in front of you. Grab the strap behind you on the left side. Once you have that, you have the ability to move that strap up and over the right side of your neck. So now here's what I want you to do. Hold the strap with your right hand. With your left hand, allow yourself to be ready to pull that strap. But before you do that, gently side bend your head a little tiny bit to the right just to shorten the muscles. Once you have the muscle shortened, then pull with that left, that right strap, that, that strap on the right side backward. So you feel tension being pulled backwards. Remember your spine is nice and long. You're sitting with a strong spine. Now that you have that strap pulled backward, gently allow yourself to lift your head back upward. Once your head is all the way upward. Okay, guys, we're going to do it all together. So we're doing like four different things at once. So do the best you can, okay? Keep the strap engaged as it's pulling backwards. Take your eyes, turn your eyes to the left. Got it? Now that your eyes are turned to the left, slowly tilt your head to the left until you begin to feel that stretch on the right side of your neck. Now, make sure your head doesn't rotate right now. It's just a little bit of a side bend. Keep the side bend, keep the strap tense, keep your gaze downward. Can you hold all those three things? And then let's add the fourth thing. Can you breathe? <laughs> so take a deep inhale in. 
and slowly exhale out. Again, deep inhale in and slowly exhale out. Now keep your gaze to the left. Use that ocular motor system, but bring your head back upright. Then bring your gaze back to the center. Then relax your strap. You got it. All right, let's do those four things all over again on the opposite side. So take the strap. Place the strap over the left side of your neck so that you have it where you would be wearing a necklace. You can see where my necklace was on the right side. It's nice and red now. I had some good tension on me, so that's good. And then allow yourself to kind of hold the strap now in the front on the left side. I like to double it so I don't have to use a lot of grip strength. Hold it on the right side, on the back. Now, once you feel like you have your strap ready, you're ready to pull it with the right hand. Before you do that, Allow yourself just to gently shorten those muscles on the left side of your neck. Now that you have those muscles shortened on the left side of your neck, take the strap and pull the strap backwards. As you pull that strap backwards, you'll feel those muscles being pulled backwards. That's allowing them to kind of get a little bit of stretch into the tension. That's what we're trying to do right now. Now, keeping that strap tension, gently bring yourself into an upright head position only. Now let's add that cranial nerve three. So we're really getting a relaxation response to that trapezius muscle and the vagus nerve all at the same time. So are you ready? Take your gaze and turn your gaze to the right. Okay, now the strap is engaged. Your gaze is to the right. Can you now slowly side bend your head to the right? Again, make sure that it doesn't rotate. So allow your head to be side bent to the right without rotating up and down. Gaze is still to the right, but it's likely slightly downward now. Okay, those are the three things. Strap, gaze to the right, head side bent to the right. Final thing, let's really work on that slow exhale. So take a deep inhale into your belly, slowly exhaling out. Deep inhale in, slowly exhaling out. Okay, now don't move your gaze, look downward, but can you keep looking to that right and bring your head upward first and then bring your gaze forward and then relax your strap, you did it. All right, so gently take your strap, move it away from you, you're done with your strap for today. So just kind of gently throw it out of the way. We've got one more thing that we're gonna do in sitting before we make it down to our yoga mat. And that is to work the other components of the upper trapezius. So we're just gonna, I mean, upper of the trapezius. So right now we've tackled the first part of the trapezius, but there's actually three parts to your trapezius. So I wanna make sure that we put a little bit of tension into all three parts of our trapezius muscle with that eye gaze, with that breath, so that if you're at home and your upper trapezius isn't your stress problem, and it may be more the muscles into the middle back area that are your stress problem, we haven't forgotten about you, okay? So here's what I want you to do. And take your hands and just gently place your hands around your elbows. And so as you place your hands around your elbows, what we're just gonna slowly do is just bring your arms upright a little bit. Now. We could technically do this exercise with our arms all the way down, with our arms all the way at the height of our shoulders, and with our arms all the way up overhead. But I am doing this class today for literally anybody. So if you've got shoulder impingement, obviously this isn't gonna be a position that you can be in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the middle of the road and focus primarily on that middle trapezius area and just have your arms a little bit up and away from your body. All right, are you ready? So allow yourself to keep your gaze steady. Are your feet on the floor? Do you have a nice, tall, strong spine? Is your neck long, is your chin tucked? And is the tongue on the roof of that mouth, right? Get all of those alignment cues in place before we create any movement for this trapezius. All right, we're gonna focus on the right trapezius first. So here's what I want you to do. Keep your neck forward. Keep your eyes gazed steady forward. But take your arms, take your trunk, 
and gently rotate it a little bit to the left until you feel a little bit of a pull between your right shoulder blade and your spine. You're tall, you're strong, your spine's nice and tall. So it's, we're not doing any sort of end range rotation here. So this is safe for anybody, but just feel that tiny little bit of a stretch between the right shoulder blade and the right spine. All right, now let's add the eyes. This is gonna be a little complicated because your eyes have to go to the right here. So having the spine rotated to the left, feeling that stretch between the shoulder blade on the right side, keep your neck nice and long, your chin gently tucked, and take your gaze to the right. Now maintain those two things. Find that steady gaze to the right. Don't let your head rotate to the right. Take a deep inhale into your belly. Exhaling out slowly. One more time, deep inhale into the belly. Exhaling out slowly. Then bring your gaze back to the center, then unrotate your trunk and rest your arms down. Okay, let's do the opposite side. So again, your arms are just resting and it's are elevated in a position that's comfortable and not causing you any sort of shoulder issues, okay? Once you're there, make sure your feet are flat on the floor. Your spine is tall and strong. So your abdominals need to be engaged. Your neck is long, your chin is tucked, your tongue is to the roof of your mouth. Have your gaze and your neck forward. Slowly twist your trunk to the right until you feel that little bit of stretch between the left shoulder blade and your spine. Once you have that position, don't let your head move this time. Keep your head steady and forward, but allow yourself to take your gaze and turn it to the left. With your gaze to the left, make sure your head didn't rotate to the left. Now that you're there, hold that stretch into that left shoulder blade area. Keep your gaze to the left. Give me a nice, slow, deep inhale into the belly. Exhaling out. One more time. Deep inhale into the belly. Slowly exhaling out. Now, keep the rotation. Bring your gaze back first. Okay, now unrotate your spine and relax your arms down. So at this point, we have significantly worked cranial nerve three, which is our ocular motor nerve that is highly connected to our relaxed response. We have also worked our vagus nerve using some salamander exercises. And we've also calmed down the sympathetic nerve that is associated with our trapezius and sternocleidomastoid muscles by doing some gentle stretching. So what I would like you to do now for me is meet me on your mat, move your chair out of the way and find yourself in child's pose. Now, as you're resting in child's pose, let's just check in with a couple of things of your alignment here, okay? So can you allow yourself just to look at your knees for a second and make sure that they're about hip distance? It's two fists if you needed to put your fist between your knees for me. And then gaze back that you see that your ankles and your feet line up with your knees and your hips. And then and just settle your sit bones down towards your heels. Rest your elbows down beside your knees, but wider than your knees today. And then just gently lengthen your neck, settle your chin, and bring the crown of your head towards the floor. Now, if you're at home with me and you have lots of tension in your neck, lots of uh, restrictions through your low back, your crown of your head may not get to the floor. So that little trusty pillow I told you about at the beginning of class, just kind of take it and bring it if you need to, to rest the crown of your head on. Once you find that position for me, I want you to gaze backwards between your feet. That's giving you a nice good length through your neck. Your chin is settled inward. Hold yourself in this position and take a nice deep inhale into your nose, into your belly. And then very slowly exhale that air out. And as you exhale that air out, 
Just imagine everything kind of melting and relaxing in this position. One more time, deep inhale in. And then very, very slowly, just imagine everything relaxing. Equanimity, remember this. Trying to find the ability to relax when you have no control of what is happening around you. One more deep inhale in and slowly exhaling out. Beautiful. Now gently make your way up into hands and knees. We have done absolutely nothing for the spine other than to keep it strong and tall while we were sitting. So let's do a little bit of movement of our spine here in the hands and knees positions. So just allow yourself to make sure that your hips are stacked directly on top of your knees. Look back that your feet didn't fall inward or outward. Walk your hands so that they're underneath your shoulders. Elbows and wrists line up with the shoulders at shoulder width. Just check in that your index fingers pointed forward and your thumbs are inward for a second. And then allow yourself to kind of lengthen your neck so that it lines up with your spine. Tuck your chin in, rest the tongue into the roof of your mouth. Okay, let's just go through three cat cows here. So what I want you to do is as you inhale, sink your belly, lift your tailbone, shoulder blades back and down, really arch that upper back, lengthen the front of your neck and look upward. And then as you exhale, pull the belly up and in, tuck the tailbone under, spread the shoulder blades, arch that upper back, allow the back of the neck to lengthen, chin to chest, gaze into that belly button. Now, can you do breath through that whole movement? So inhale as you sink downward, but you're lengthening through that upper chest and that neck. And then as you exhale, 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 allow yourself to really lengthen through that lower back. One more time, inhaling, sinking everything down, squeezing those shoulder blades, lifting that chest, lengthening the front of the neck and looking up. Get those eyes up there today, right? And then as you exhale, really curling everything under, lengthen the back of the neck, chin to chest, get those eyes down there. Look at that belly button. You've got it. Now, slowly allow yourself to push back into child's pose. Keep your arms straight here. Walk your arms gently forward, Gently forward, gently forward, no shoulder pain. So if you're feeling anything in your shoulders, just gently drop your elbows down towards the mat. But in this lengthened child's pose, just kind of walking your fingertips, walking your fingertips, walking your fingertips. Lengthen your neck, settle your chin, gaze back at your feet. And give me one deep inhale into the belly here. And then slowly exhaling that air out. Beautiful. Now we're making it down onto our belly. So a lot of us have sensitive low backs because we don't like extension, especially if we are aging and we have any sort of stenosis or degenerative changes to the joints of our discs or joints. So I strongly encourage you to use a pillow and you're resting the pillow underneath your belly and your chest, not underneath your hips. So for some of us, if we have really, 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 really tight backs, it might even behoove us to put the pillow bigger like I have today. Now, why are we doing that? We're doing that because we're going to be in what is called Sphinx pose. So you're going to be up on your elbows. The more support you have underneath you, you don't need to worry about your low back. And more importantly, you won't have the risk as as much compression through your shoulders because you're taking some of the weight through your rib cage. Okay, now that you found yourself in sphinx pose, let's just make sure that our alignment is okay. So maybe look back at your feet and make sure that they're not too wide out on your mat or that they haven't come together, but that they're about six inches apart. And then look down that your elbows run directly underneath your shoulders. And then once you have that position, let your forearms run down onto the mat. And can you get that position that you see that your index fingers line up with your elbows? Pull your thumbs gently inward so that you get that good stretch through that weight bearing component of our hands and then just gently rest the outer three fingers. 
Now, we're not doing crazy movements with our spine here, but allow yourself to feel that if you push into your elbows, you spread your shoulder blades versus if you have no weight into your elbows, you just let your shoulder blades collapse and that puts a lot of tension into your spine. So what I would like you to do is gently push into your elbows so you feel that engagement through your shoulder blades. And I, I want you now that you're in that position to kind of play with the position of your neck here. So if you're not using any of the neck muscles, the back of your neck muscles, your head just kind of falls downward towards the floor. Looks a lot like forward head posture when you're in standing versus if you're really trying to take your head and lift it all the way upwards, you're using a lot of those back neck muscles. What I want you to do is find a position that you are comfortable with your neck gently being in alignment with your spine that you feel that you're using those back neck muscles, but that you're not stressing your neck. Make sure that your chin is gently tucked in in that position. All right, now that we're there, let's do what we really wanna do today, which is manage our stress and tackle that parasympathetic nervous system. So now in this position, ladies and gentlemen, what I want you to do is gently Take your gaze and turn your gaze to the right. You can't see where my eyes are, so you're going to have to trust me that I'm looking to the right, but don't let your head move. Now, without head, move heading, moving the head, keep that gaze to the right. Now, gently side bend the head to the right ear, ear to shoulder. Make sure that the head hasn't rotated. And the gaze should be somewhere down near the side of your mat by your shoulder. Make sure your neck is long, your chin is tucked. Remember, we gotta use those posture muscles here. Can you take that deep inhale and breathe into that pillow underneath you? And then as you slowly exhale, keep the gaze to the right, keep the side bend of the neck to the right. Let's do that one more time. Inhaling. Push the belly into that pillow. A little bit of a stretch for that low back, that's an extension. And then as you exhale, just gently let it go. Now, keep your gaze to the right, but bring your head back upward. Difficult to do when you're no longer in a sitting position. Then slowly bring your gaze back between those thumbs. All right, so before we do the left side, can you check in that you still have engagement through your shoulder blades? Can you check in that your neck is still long, your chin is tucked, and you've got some postural muscles working to stabilize your neck and your head? All right, let's do that exercise in the other position. So here, keep your head still, turn your gaze to your left. All right, now with your gaze to your left, don't let your head rotate left or right. Slowly side bend your head to the left. Keep pushing through those elbows so that you don't feel compression in the back of your neck. Now your gaze should be somewhere down near the outside of your mat by your elbow. Hold that position. Take a deep inhale into your belly, then exhaling out. One more time, deep inhale into the belly, then exhaling out. Now don't move your gaze, keep it to the left. Bring the head back upright first, then slowly bring your gaze back to the center. Now from here, allow yourself to bring your hands underneath your shoulders, engage through your abdominals and your pelvis, Push your feet down and slowly push yourself back into a child's pose. Pillow, you're done with it. So just gently move it to the side of you. Check in that your feet don't fall inward. Slowly drop yourself down onto your mat. Drop your elbows down to the outside of your knees. Lengthen through the back of your neck. Rest the crown of your head on the floor. Gaze straight back between those feet. Take a nice deep inhale into the belly. Slowly exhaling out. Let's do that again. Deep inhale into the belly. 
and slowly exhaling out. Now, gently bring yourself up at a child's pose. Let yourself roll, uh, roll over to your left or your right side and then rest down on your side and then slowly roll yourself over onto your back. So once you're on your back, take a moment here just to kind of bring your hands behind your neck and, and lengthen that neck. We're not focusing on spinal stabilization or anything like that today, merely focusing on managing stress and finding equanimity. So once you find the position that your neck is long, check in that your shoulder blades are underneath you, your feet are bent, your feet and knees are bent, your feet are flat. Just take your right knee up to your chest gently. And then take a deep inhale. And then as you exhale, just gently pull your right knee into your chest. Now settle that knee. Allow yourself to keep that neck long, that chin tucked. And then something as simple as opening up through our low back and our gluteals here. Keep your head forward, but take your gaze and turn your gaze to the right. Take a nice deep inhale here. And exhaling slowly out through that belly. And again, deep inhale in. And exhaling slowly through that belly. And then bring your gaze back up to the center, gazing at that ceiling, relaxing the right foot to the floor, taking your left knee to your chest. Nice deep inhale here. Exhale, pulling that knee into your chest, not forcing it today, just gently feeling that little bit of length through your low back, that little bit of length through your gluteals, making the neck nice and long, the chin gently tucked, shoulder blades are down, holding this position keeping the face and the head upright, taking the gaze and turning it to the left. Now with your gaze turned to the left, deep inhale into the belly, slowly exhaling out, deep inhale in, and slowly exhaling out. And then bring your gaze back up to the center. And once your gaze is there, slowly releasing the left foot back down to the mat. Now in this position, taking your right leg, placing your right leg straight down on the mat, taking your left foot to your right thigh, taking your right hand to your left knee, gently taking the left hand and bringing it out to the side of your body. A nice deep inhale here. And then as you exhale, slowly let that knee fall to the right as the pelvis lifts and the low back lifts and the rib cage lifts. Keep that left shoulder blade down and keep that arm nice and long. Okay, now we're in spinal twist here. Don't instinctively just rotate that head to the right today. Remember our entire focus on our class is stress management finding equanimity. So let's take this last final moment to work that ocular motor nerve. So take your gaze and turn your gaze to the left first. Now that your gaze is to the left, lengthen your neck, settle your chin and slowly turn your head to the left. As you turn your head to the left, can you look down into your mat, holding your spinal twist here? Take a deep inhale into your belly and exhaling out. One more time, inhale into the belly and exhaling out. Keep your gaze down, keep your gaze to the left. Can you keep your gaze to the left but bring your head back? Hard to do, isn't it? I know. Now slowly let your eyes come back up to the center. All right, start at that left rib cage and derotate your spine, letting the lumbar spine be second, letting the pelvis be third, letting the hip be fourth, and then placing the left foot on the floor, sliding the right leg up, sliding the left leg down, placing the right foot onto the left thigh, left hand to the right knee, right hand out to the side of the body. Lengthen the neck, settle the chin, keep that gaze upright, yeah. Take a nice deep inhale here, and then as you exhale, 
That right knee comes to the left, pelvis lifts, low back lifts, rib cage rotates and lifts. Keep that right shoulder blade down, keep that arm out to the side of your body. Now, don't move your head instinctively to the right like we always do with spinal twist. Take a moment here to keep your, gaze, your face upright, your head upright, but take your gaze to the right. Stare to the right here. Now, keeping that gaze to the right, slowly rotate the head to the right as you gaze downward and inward into your mat. Holding here, take a nice deep inhale into your belly and exhaling out. One more deep inhale into your belly and exhaling out. Now don't move your gaze, keep your gaze downward first. Keep your gaze to the right, but slowly bring the head up, keeping the gaze to the right. Then bring your gaze back upward. Start at that right shoulder blade and let the spine, let the rib cage unrotate first, followed by the low back, followed by the pelvis, followed by the hip, foot onto the floor. Slide the left leg up and then in this final position, gently bring your left knee to your chest, followed by your right knee to your chest. Take a deep inhale here. As you exhale, pull your knees into your chest. Now, allow yourself to lengthen your neck, settle your chin, close your eyes this time, guys. Can you take your gaze to the right? Hold it there. Take a nice deep inhale in and exhale out. Bring your gaze back up to the center. Eyelids are closed. Can you take your gaze to the left? Deep inhale in and exhale out. Take your gaze back up to the center and gently open your eyes and one foot at a time, bring your feet back down onto your mat. And then one leg at a time, slide your heels so that the heels are touching the edge of your mat. Check in that you feel like your shoulder blades are underneath you and then just gently allow your palms to lift towards the ceiling. Allow yourself to lengthen through your neck and settle your chin, but keep your eyes open. Now, as we lay in Savasana, I want to give you one final stress management tool. As this comes more from the psychology world and cognitive behavioral therapy. But here's what I want you to do. Keep your eyes open. And as your eyes are open, I want you to think of three things that you're looking at. Look at three things. And then once you've looked at your feet, three things, close your eyes. Now keeping your body nice and still. I want you to think of two things that you hear around you. Two things that you hear around you. And finally, one of the parasympathetic nerves that we haven't tackled today is cranial nerve nine, which is the glossopharyngeal muscle or nerve, but it controls our swallowing and our tongue and all of that. So here's what I want you to do finally. I want you to take a nice big swallow. And as you swallow, I want you to think about if you taste anything. The reason really good food makes us happy is because our taste buds, ladies and gentlemen, are directly connected to our relaxation response. And so think about finally, is there anything that you taste as you swallowed? Now slowly, 
Start to wiggle your fingers and your toes and then start to move your wrists and your ankles. And then when you feel like you're ready, gently slide one leg up followed by the other and slowly roll over onto your left or your right side. Rest there for just a moment. When you're ready on a nice good exhale, allow yourself to push yourself up into a seated position. And finding yourself in tailor pose or easy pose, hands to your heart. So we have done lots to manage stress today. If you take just one of these things and start to applying it to life, maybe, just maybe, you can find more equanimity. Take a nice deep inhale in and exhale out. Namaste. The highest in me salutes the highest in you. Thank you for joining me today. <laughs>